I just wanted to give you my impression first and then open it up to questions or comments from you guys. Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. We're good. Okay. So, um, uh, when Miss Meg was telling us about, you know, her idea of what we were going to see from, you know, when we, when we, before we started playing the video, um, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I have to admit, this was my favorite so far. Like, I was blown away. I thought it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Just from the beginning to the end. Obviously, there were a tiny few details I might have done differently if I was the director. Sorry, not going to translate, but I, I loved it. I loved it. Just paraphrase. Sorry, I forgot you were here. <laughs> you don't let me eat and then... <laughs> You're just going to sit there. I'm just going to sit Sit here. there and look pretty. Um, sorry, paraphrasing. Okay. Um, skip the Meg part. Just tell me what I thought. I was going to start with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I told you to skip it. Okay. <laughs> um... Empezando ese video, no sabía que... Um, qué expectativa tener, pero tengo que decir que eso fue uno de, de los episodios favoritos que he visto. I was, I was really happy with how they brought everything together, it really was. Even the Blessed Mother and everything, very happy. Estuve muy contento en la forma que um, uh, llevaron a cabo todo y, y cómo enseñaron a, a nuestra Santa Madre. Like, the only thing I personally would have wanted to change from this episode. Lo único que yo personalmente hubiera querido que cambiaran de ese episodio. Was the very beginning. Es el principio. When Mary and Joseph were looking for Jesus in the temple. Es cuando María y José estaban buscando al niño Jesús en el templo. Now, once they found him, everything seemed great. Like, I didn't have a problem with anything. Um, después de que lo encontraron, no encontré ningún problema después de eso y todo estaba bien. And we do know that Mary did have anxiety when, she, when they lost Jesus, because the Bible says she was anxious. Y sabemos que María tuvo ansiedad cuando perdió a Jesús, porque la Biblia nos dice que um, ella tenía mucha ansiedad al saber que perdió a Jesús. But I, I never would have uh, portrayed her as being afraid. Pero nunca lo hubiera visto como um, que hubiera tenido miedo. Right. Mary would not have been afraid of anything. María no le hubiera tenido mi miedo a nada. Because she had perfect faith in God. Porque tenía una fe perfecta en Dios. So she would have been worried about Jesus, but not afraid. Se hubiera preocupado por Jesús, pero no se hubiera asustado. Right. So that's, that's the only thing I, I personally think that I would want to change. Es lo único que yo personalmente um, quisiera cambiar. So I, I'd love to hear some of your perspectives or any questions that you had or, or anything that stood out to you. Sí, you noticed no. about maybe a Jewish wedding? <laughs> I'm waiting for the pause. Go. <laughs> oh, me gustaría escuchar sus per per oh, ¿sí? perspectivas. Mm -hmm perspectivas o algunas preguntas que tengan sobre este episodio que acabamos de ver. Is that a hand up? Uh -huh. You liked it? Yeah. Oh, that was positive. I just kind of picked it apart because I'm a mother. And, yeah. And, and honestly, I lost Mo at the Rose Festival parade when she was five years old. Lost her for like 15 uh -huh. minutes uh -huh. in a crowd of 100,000. You know, and all I could think of was smoke and the panic, but the panic and in that movie, I'd see her as panicked and I don't yeah. know if Mary would be. I, I think you, I think she had so much more faith that she couldn't have possibly be moved, you know, in those moments, you know, because I had no faith. I was seeing Mo's dead body in my head, you know, and all right. that. And so, um, and so that, I didn't like that part of it. I didn't like the panic, like you said. And I also felt like when she comes to him at the wedding and talks to, she wouldn't have talked in front of people. She wouldn't have said, yeah, no, boy, in front of everybody. She would have to have the walk, you know? And, um, I mean, that's how I've always imagined her, kind of cool. Right. And, cause, and then knowing he would do it without any other word, 
do whatever he tells you. So that was the only, I felt like that was a disconnect between Catholic and Protestant. Right. And then trying to understand Mary, but us having a better understanding of Mary and her pondering, because she pondered a lot. And so, you know, I, I go like, yeah, but she, I wish she'd be a lot calmer. Yeah, and I, I can agree with that. I, I think that, uh, so from, from what's been handed down to us from the fathers of the church, go. You don't have to repeat what she said. Oh, I was going to translate what she said. Oh, okay. I already started working on it in my head. <laughs> okay, now repeat what you said, because so, I was working on that. <laughs> from uh, what the fathers of the church have said? Lo que los padres de la iglesia enseñan is that, um, you know, in, in many respects, the Blessed Virgin would have seemed like any other woman. Um, in, like in general. Por lo general, um, María, a cualquier otra religión, María podría ser cualquier otra persona. Right. So she wasn't so beautiful, people would have noticed her walking down the street. Um, ella no era tan bella que um, la gente la notaría si estuviera caminando por la calle. So, and I'm talking physically. Y hablo de lo físico. And that goes the same for Jesus. Y eso va lo mismo para Jesús. Right? The, the, the Bible says that he wasn't so beautiful that people, like, were shocked by his beauty. He looked like everybody else. Sorry. No, no. Um. So Jesus looked like everybody else. Mary looked. Mary, Jesus looked like any Jewish man. Mary looked like any Jewish woman. Jesus parecía como cualquier um, hombre judío y María parecía como cualquier mujer judía. Uh, so for the most part, you you wouldn't be able to pick them out of a crowd. Así que por la mayor parte ustedes no podrían um, escogerlos en medio de tanta gente. It's only if you got to know them that you would recognize that there was something different about them. Solo si llegaran a conocerlos ustedes se darían cuenta que hay algo diferente sobre uh, de ellos. But one of the things that is mentioned about the Blessed Mother in particular and Saint Joseph. Pero algo que um, ellos mencionan en particular de nuestra Madre Santa y de, is, y de José. Is that they didn't talk a lot. Es que ellos no hablaban mucho. Right. They, they didn't need to. Ellos no necesitaban. Uh, you know, they could say in a few words what it would take us a whole paragraph. Ellos pueden decir en pocas palabras lo que a nosotros nos hablaría um, párrafos para decir. So, have you, have you guys ever noticed when you were trying to explain something to your family or your friends? Yes. ¿Se han dado cuenta cuando tratan de explicarle algo a su familia um, o a sus amigos? And it took you a lot of words. Y les tomó muchas palabras para decirlo. Right, because you, you try to explain it one way. Porque tratan de explicarlo de una manera. But they didn't understand. Pero ellos no entendieron. So you have to find new words to explain it a different way. Así que tienen que buscar nuevas maneras de es, explicarlo diferente. And you have to do this like two or three times. Y tienen que, hacerlo, tienen que hacer esto dos o tres veces. But do you know why the saints, and in this case Jesus and Mary, would not have needed to do that? ¿Y saben por qué los santos o Jesús y María no tuvieran necesidad de hacer eso? It's because they knew themselves so well. Es porque ellos se conocían a sí mismos tan bien. That they could always understand other people. Que ellos siempre pueden entender a otra gente. So whenever they were talking to anyone, Así que cuando hablaban con cualquier persona, they knew exactly what to say to get their message across. Sabían exactamente qué decir para, um, make their point. Yeah, make their point or... Yeah, I know, I'm trying to find the exact word. But, uh -huh, para comunicarles el, el mensaje. Right, yeah, communicate their message. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, in a, in a movie format, Ahora en, like in a, in a movie, that's not going to be portrayed very easily. So, because they have to communicate to every audience. 
Porque ellos tienen que comunicar con uh, toda la audiencia. So they're going to have the Blessed Mother talking more. Así que van a tener a uh, Nuestra Santa Madre hablar más. I, I think that's just because it's the nature of, of audiovisual communication. So. Um, y eso es por la naturaleza de la comunicación de audio y, y visual. But, uh, but it's, it is a, a good point. Um, uh, I noticed that when he, Jesus said, my time has not come, woman, what have you to do with me? When he would say that, he said mother instead of woman. Um, he did say mother, didn't he? Yeah. Aha! Go ahead, I'll let you translate that. I noticed that. that. One again. <laughs> Oops. Um, Oops. William, Sorry. William dice que él notó que me. cuando María llegó hacia él, y le pidió y le dijo que ya no había vino. Jesús respondió, Madre, ¿qué tengo que ver yo con eso? Pero nosotros lo sabemos con, como mujer, ¿qué tiene, que ver, uh, ¿qué tiene que ver eso conmigo? En el Gospel de John, right? That's, that's, we know that Jesus called her woman, not mother at that moment, because of the Gospel of John. Y sabemos por el Evangelio de Juan, que, um, Jesús le dijo mujer, no le dijo madre. Now, well, that might not seem like a big deal to most people. Ahora, eso tal vez no es de gran importancia right. a la mayoría de la gente. But the, the problem is, Pero el problema es, is that this is the word of God. Que esa es la palabra de Dios. Right. We're portraying the word of God. Y estamos mostrando la palabra de Dios. So you can never take a uh, creative license with that. <laughs> Así que nunca pueden ser creativos con eso. You know, they, when, when I was uh, your age, about your age, Cuando yo tenía de su edad, I was on a Catholic retreat. Yo estaba en un retiro católico. And uh, part of the retreat was the, the kids breaking up into groups and practicing skits. Um, una parte del retiro fue que nos teníamos que formar grupos y hacer obras. And the skits were given to us, um, so each group had a very specific skit. Y nos daban el... I can't think of the word for script. Uh, each... Um, prepared, line, prepared... Uh, no, play is a different word. It, does, it won't transfer. Skit. Well. Just each skit instead of script. Each skit was different. Specific. Cada obra era, tenía un tema específico. Right. Um, and it was all about the, the, the creation story. Y era todo sobre el, uh, la creación. So it was, the, it was the, the first chapters of Genesis when God created everything. Eran los primeros capítulos de Genesis cuando Dios creó todo. Now, uh, the, the group that I was part of Ahora, el grupo que yo formé parte, uh, we were doing the creation of like the stars and, and the moon and the sun. That, that, that was our, our part. Um, nuestro grupo formó parte de el día cuando Dios formó las estrellas, el sol, la luna. Right. So, so it was simple enough. Algo muy simple. But one of the other kids in another group came up to me after practice. Pero uno de los otros uh, niños Vino hacia mí después de práctica. And his group was doing the creation of Adam and Eve. Y el grupo de él estaba haciendo la creación de Adán y Eva. But guess what they were supposed to do. Pero adivinen qué es lo que ellos tenían que hacer. Right. Their program said that Eve was created first and then Adam was created. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> el programa de ellos. <laughs> I got responses from yeah. <laughs> el, programa de, el programa de ellos decía que ellos tenían que hacer la obra como que Eva fue formada antes de Adán. So I went to the people in charge of the retreat. Así que yo fui a, la, a las personas encargadas del, el, encargadas del retiro. And I told them they can't do this. Y les dije, no pueden hacer eso. And they said, oh, it's just artistic license. Y me, di, y me dijeron, o oh, era una licencia artística. I said, this is the Bible. Y yo dije, pero esa es la Biblia. Right. This is God's inspired word. Estas son palabras um, inspiradas por Dios. Right. You, you, 
That's a big change. <laughs> Así que ese es un gran cambio. And I, and I told them. Y yo les dije. If you allow that skit to be performed, I I will leave. Si ustedes hacen esa obra, yo me iré. I won't be a part of it. No puede ser parte de eso. I won't even watch it. Y no lo, ni, lo, ni siquiera lo miraré. Now they were like, oh, oh, David, get over it. It'll be okay. Y me, me dijeron, David. <laughs> David. David. Um, Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Um, Superado. Superado. Yeah. That sound right, no pressure. Right. No pressure. No, I know. Right. Well, well, I wasn't going to let it go. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, so, uh, so uh, I ended up like calling the pastor. Así que yo le llamé al pastor. And I, I don't think he cared about it as much as I did. <laughs> but because I made a big enough stink. <laughs> because I, because I, I know, I I'm trying to translate it and give you an easier translation. Because I was a big enough problem. <laughs> right, they, they did not do the, the skits. No hicieron las obras. So, so, I mean, again, like I said, this is the Bible. You don't, met, you don't mess around with it. Y como les digo, esta es la Biblia, así que no cambien cosas de ella. Maybe a, kind of an odd question, but my understanding when Jesus would perform miracles that he would use like some sort of um, earth elements, like spit on the ground and, you know, wipe it on someone's eyes. I don't know if that was always the case for every miracle, public miracle, but in this uh, case, I just noticed that. I'm just curious, like how he actually performed, I guess, with his hand, or but wouldn't he like use like dirt? Or something? Right, right. Okay. So, so the question is, um, you know, Jesus often used something physical in the process of performing the miracle. So la pregunta es, um, Jesús siempre usaba algo. Físico en el proceso de um, en cuando hacía un milagro. So in the gospel today for mass. Así que en el evangelio de hoy en la misa. Jesus healed a blind man. Jesús curó a un ciego. And what he did was he spat in the ground. Y lo que hizo es escupió en el piso. Right, COVID would you know he would have gone against all the COVID rules. <laughs> And then he rubbed it. He rubbed the mud he made on the person's eyes. Y de eso sacó lodo y le cubrió los ojos al hombre. Right, and that's how he healed. Y así es como él lo curó. You know, so in, and I would say in most of the miracles that Jesus performs. Y eso pasa en los, en la mayoría de los milagros que um, Jesús hizo. Right, he, he does something like that. Él hace algo así. Right, he'll touch them. Los toca. Right, he'll, he'll uh, put his hands on their head. Uh, he'll speak a word to them of command. Um, But there are miracles that he simply does by an invisible act of the will. Con un poder invisible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. An invisible power or just a thought. Mm -hmm. Right. So, like, the, there were many times uh, where he healed somebody from a great distance. Y hay muchas veces donde él curó a alguien um, de, de gran distancia. And he just said, oh, they're healed. <laughs> y él nada más decía, oh, están curados. Right. So, so the, reason, the reason we can see that he does both... He, he does miracles in both ways. Y la razón por cual vemos que hace milagros de las dos maneras. Right. Is because he's showing us, one, that he's a real human being. Um, y nos enseña, por, uh, una, porque él es un, un humano de verdad. Right. That, and he uses the real things of the universe. Y usa uh, las cosas verdaderas del universo. To give us grace. Para darnos gracia. But also that he's God. Pero también que él es Dios. And he can just want something and it'll happen. Que él puede um, querer algo y sucede. Right, so, so it's both of those things Jesus is trying to, 
teach us. Así que son esas dos cosas en cual um, Jesús nos está tratando de enseñar. He's both God and he's a man. Y nos enseña que es uh, ambo hombre como Dios. Because there have been many heresies of, you know, people believing that he's only one or the other. Porque hay, han habido muchas heresies. False um, teachings. Enseñanzas falsas en cual él es uno o el otro, pero no ambos. Yes. Because creation is good. God right, is good. right. The physical universe is good. God said so. Ah. Porque, la, porque la creación es buena. Porque todo lo que Dios crea es bueno. Did you guys um, have any thoughts or questions? Anything said? Did you like the wedding? How they, how they had a celebration? Wasn't that fantastic? The dancing and everything? You mean the, the father of the bride? Yeah, so what's up with that? Why was he so arrogant? Yes. Okay. So wh why was the father of the bride so arrogant? Ella pregunta que por qué um, el padre de la novia es muy arrogante. So I, I think, in a sense, he at one point he basically told us. Um, in en un sentido, él, él básicamente nos dijo el por qué. He said that his family was very powerful. Nos dijo que su familia era muy poderosa. Right, they had a lot of money and a lot of influence. Tenían mucho dinero y mucha influencia. And when people have power and authority, y cuando la gente tiene poder y autoridad, we say it often goes to their head. Um, muchas veces decimos que se les, se les sube a la cabeza. Right, because they have more power or more money, they think they're better than other people. Porque cuando tienen más poder o dinero, creen que tienen um, más autoridad o se sienten mejores que los demás. But, but what did Jesus teach us about authority? Pero qué es lo que Jesús nos enseñó sobre la autoridad? He said that the, the, you know, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, when they have authority, they rule over others. They put them down. Um, dice que cuando los fariseos tienen poder, Um, son I don't, I don't know if that's not exactly the right word. Gobiernan, gobiernan yeah, yeah. sobre otros. Yeah. Um, but Jesus said to the apostles, Pero Jesús le dijo a los apostoles, even though he gave them more authority than anyone else in the world, Aunque él les dio um, más autoridad a ellos que cualquier otra persona right. en el mundo. How were they supposed to use it? ¿Cómo es que deben de usarlo? Do you remember what he told them? ¿Se acuerdan lo que él, él, él les dijo? No. no. He said, you're not going to rule over, you're going to act like a servant. Huh. Right? Yeah. No van a gobernar. Van a actuar como sirvientes. Right. So Jesus came, and even though he's God, he served us. Y Jesús vino, y aunque sabemos que él es Dios, él nos sirvió. And so he wants us to do the same with our power and our authority. Así que él quiere que hagamos lo mismo con nuestro poder y nuestra autoridad. Even our money. Aún con nuestro dinero. Right, if I've got extra money. Si yo tengo dinero extra. I shouldn't use it to control other people. No debería de usarlo para controlar a otra gente. I should use it to help those in need. Debería de usarlo para ayudar a esos en necesidad. Because that's what a servant would do. Porque es lo que un sirviente haría. And did you have a follow up? Just, yes, I was going to say that um, when the father drank the wine that Jesus had created, he said he was wrong. Yeah. So I think they, they were making those points to contrast. Right, right. They, was, they were trying to show that the wine that Jesus made helped him change his heart, helped him grow in humility. So. That's okay. Yeah, second question. Oh, uh, so uh, when they were talking, when they were at the table, when Peter asked, is this guy where he met Jesus, he said, yeah, he's the Messiah.
Right, right, that's a good question. So, um, so why did everybody at the table look surprised when they found out Jesus had been working with his hands, like a commoner, like a normal person? Um, he keeps adding words, it gets harder. <laughs> um, at really night, words. in the dark, <laughs> with his left hand. No, sorry. <laughs> ella que porque todos se rieron cuando, um, o se sorprendieron cuando supieron que Jesús era como cualquier persona común y hacía um, labor manual. So, the Jews know that the promised Messiah is going to be a great instrument in God's hands, right? So, los judíos saben que um, el Mesías Va a ser un instrumento poderoso. He's going to do greater things than any of the Old Testament prophets. Él va a hacer cosas grandiosas más que cualquier profeta. Right. He'll be greater than Abraham. Va a ser mejor que Abraham. David. David. Solomon. Salomón. Salomón. Sorry. Is it Salomón? Salomón. And all of the others. You said fish. Salomon <laughs> or Salomon? No, Salomon is a fish. Yeah. What is Salomon? Salomon. Salomon. Yeah. But if you don't add that extra O, you're saying fish. King fish. <laughs> King salmon. Oh, that could be a, a fish. Well, yeah. King salmon. It's okay. the same word in Spanish. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. So, um, so, I'll get right to you one second. So, they knew that he was going to be the greatest person in Israel. Ellos sabían que él iba a ser um, la persona más grandiosa en Israel. And he would be a great king. Y que él iba a ser un, buen, uh, un gran rey. So when you think of a great king, así que cuando piensan de un gran rey, can you imagine somebody build, building a toilet? Pueden imaginarse a alguien construyendo <laughs> una... A toilet. Oh. Okay. Solo Marta. Letrina. Letrina. Sorry. Yeah. A <laughs> it's latrine. Todos me <laughs> a latrine is just a public toilet. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, not only was he working with his hands and building like any commoner, no solo él constru uh, trabajaba con sus manos y construía como cualquier persona común, but he was working on something for people to go to the bathroom. Pero estaba trabajando en algo que ayudaba a la gente a ir al baño. I mean, imagine you were a famous carpenter. Imagínense que fueran un carpintero famoso. Right. Are you going to make uh, ramps for people to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Ustedes van a hacer rampas para que la gente pueda usar el baño. Right. So it surprised them that, that he would be doing such humble work. Así que les sorprendió cuando um, aprendieron que él estuviera haciendo trabajo Tan humilde. Because they knew he was the greatest person in the world. Porque ellos sabían que él era um, la persona más grandiosa del mundo. So before I get to you, yeah. uh, I know why the. Okay. Um, person that was on acting because I know why he was acting better after he raised the one dead Jesus. Why was that? Because. That's right. There must have been a lot of grace with that wine because Jesus touched it and made it, right? Correct. Yeah, I agree. I think that's exactly what happened. I agree. And does that mean Mr. David Jesus like make the law kind of easy? He did, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was up with that? He was just, was it just like a job he was working on? or? It was a little Ella pregunta uh, que en un episodio, episodio anterior, Jesús hizo un, uh, una llave y una... Cerradura. 
Cerradura. Okay. Oh, is that what you call it? Okay. Yeah, I thought I was wrong. Yeah. A cerradura. Okay. Cerradura. Que Jesús hizo una cerradura y una llave, y ella preguntaba que por qué era eso. So, I would say that's a little more sophisticated than a toilet ramp. <laughs> Right? You think so? So, I mean, it has to be much smarter to make a lock and key. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. I. You were just going back and forth. <laughs> How about you just cue me? <laughs> okay. I'll just throw something at you. You can, I'm okay. sure. <laughs> Somebody grab some dates. I want you to throw them at me. No. We have figs. Grapes. Oh, figs. I'll try again. Yes, please. I, I, I have to say I love, not like, the way uh, Virgin Mary looked at Jesus like to convince him of do the, 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 the miracle, you know, do something. Yeah. It was just a look, and he's like, I will do it, right? That was beautiful. I, I, was, I, I was like, oh, my God, yeah. I really feel that I, well, yeah. Yeah. the obedience. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You, you could almost see him go. Okay. It's like she was like begging, yeah. right? And then she said, thank you, knowing what Jesus was. You know, it's, it's her son, but she, she knows what I, he's going to do. I thought that right? was beautiful. So yeah, it was something like Go. <laughs> I can okay. She can say it. No, you translate. That's right. That's right. You translate it yourself. No, yo digo que me encantó la manera en que Mary miró a, a Jesús, es que con una mirada solo bastó para que él hiciera lo que ella le estaba pidiendo y que también eh, se veía como que ella le estaba suplicando haz algo y que también eh, cuando le dijo por favor y después le dio las gracias por lo que él había hecho. So que a pesar de que ella sabía lo que él era, o sea, era su hijo, pero ella sabía a lo que él vino al mundo, como quiera ella le suplicó y le dio las gracias, ¿no? Después de que él hizo lo que Y la obediencia que él tuvo. La obediencia de que solamente la mamá lo miró y él, ok. Con eso va a The same way my daddy used to do. Just look at me. Yes, daddy, I did. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was, it was very beautiful. And... I, I liked the contrast that they set between the earlier encounter in Jerusalem and then the wedding feast at Cana. Contrast? I know. Just, I just know, say I'm contrast sorry. and put an O on the end. Contrasto. <laughs> that one was right. It was? Yes. I just made that up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Huh? <laughs> dice, dice el que le gustó. El contrasto. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm good. Contraste. 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 Oh. Well, I used it differently. The the word itself was right, but when you put it in a sentence, you have to change that. Anyway. That being me. Yeah. Um, el contraste de el principio cuando um, uh, cuando María encontró a Jesús. Y luego en la boda, cuando María le repitió las mismas palabras a él. So, uh, in the first scene, and this is, this is correct, uh, the fathers of the church say that when they found Jesus in Jerusalem, Los padres de la iglesia dicen que cuando encontraron... No, sorry. When they found Jesus in Jerusalem. Okay, I was right, sorry. That he was trying to start his public ministry. But Mary and Joseph said it wasn't time. So even the fathers of the church interpreted that. Um, now, we don't know if Mary understood what she was asking of her son at the wedding feast of Cana. Ahora no sabemos si María entendió lo que le estaba pidiendo que Jesús hiciera en las bodas de Cana. Because in the gospel, porque en el evangelio, 
We have a very simple dialogue between Jesus and Mary. Tenemos un um, diálogo, mm -hmm. un diálogo simple entre Jesús y María. But in the in the movie, pero en la película, they they clearly showed us that they thought Mary knew he was going to start his public ministry when he did this miracle. Nos enseñan que tal vez María sí sabía qué es lo que estaba pidiendo uh, que Jesús hiciera cuando cuando le pidió el milagro um, con las Sí, nos, nos dieron a entender que ella, ella sabía que él estaba empezando su ministerio público. Now, we don't know if that's true from the gospel, but it's possible she did. So. Ahora, um, no sabemos si es verdad, um, de acuerdo con el evangelio, pero puede ser posible. But I did think it was a good parallel. Pero pensé que era un buen paralelo. She says the same thing. He says... If not now, when? And they say, she says back to them. If not now, But when? But in the beginning, you, you hearkened to memory about this, where I was like, eh, where you did a you did a homily that he was listening. And that's how they learned. They were listening. He listened. And I went back to the Bible and looked at it, and I, that kind of was like it's something that I'm kind of meditating on, because he wasn't teaching them. No. This is where that was. Thank you and for pointing that out. And they said teaching. And yeah. I was like, that was incorrect. Oh, oh. I forgot about that. And asking questions, you said. Right. I love that. So, yeah, in the, let, let me let me rephrase this. Yeah. So, in the uh, story where Jesus was lost for three days and found in the temple. En la historia en cual Jesús um, se perdió por tres días y luego fue encontrado en el templo. It doesn't say he was teaching. No dice que él estaba enseñando. It says he was listening to the teachers. Decía que él estaba escuchando a los maestros. And asking them questions. Y haciendo preguntas. That's all it says. Es todo lo que dice. Now, in, the, in this clip, Joseph says he was teaching in the temple. Ahora, en esta serie, dice, uh, José dice que Jesús estaba enseñando en el templo. Now, what's profound about what it says in the gospel, in Luke's gospel. Um, ahora, lo que es... Exactly what you think. It's what they said. Más profundo, more profound. Okay, it it doesn't make sense when I put the word sentence together. That's why. Try it and then they'll laugh and we'll see. <laughs> oh sure. <laughs> Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. It, it, the meaning of the sentence in Spanish won't have the same effect, but I'll do it. Can you re restructure the no. phrases? No. No, because I would need a different word. <laughs> it's fine. I'll say it. Um, lo que el Evangelio de. I trust you. Luke. De Lucas profundiza. Okay. It's good. Is that what you mean? It makes clear like the no. gospel of this. No, 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 no yeah. it's not that it makes clear. It's that it's, yeah. that, that it's more pow like powerful. Say your sentence again. In a sense, mm -hmm. like it, what, what Luke says in his gospel is more profound than what this is expressing in the video. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now that you've said the entire sentence, uh -huh. that, that, that makes sense. Sorry. You only give me part, and so it doesn't make sense when I pick the sentence apart. Sorry. Sure, I understand. Okay. Um, I won't pick on you. <laughs> <laughs> lo que el Evangelio de Lucas profundiza... Eh, eh, no, lo que el Evangelio de Lucas uh, dice es más profundo de lo que enseñan en esta serie. Uh, the reason is... Uh, no person would be allowed to ask questions to any teacher. Y la razón es porque ninguna persona puede hacer preguntas a, a cualquier maestro. Unless they had first been granted permission. 
Al menos que primero se le dio permiso. So if young, some young 12-year-old boy came and sat there and started listening to the teachers, Así que si un niño de 12 años um, se sentó ahí y empezó a escuchar a los maestros, right. he could raise his hand as much as he wants. Él puede levantar la mano todo lo que él quiera. Right. But they would almost never call on them. Pero casi nunca lo llamarían. Because what can a 12-year-old know? Porque qué es lo que un niño de 12 años um, supiera. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, so the fact that they were letting him ask them questions. Um, pero, huh? Allowing him. Can you finish your sentence? So the fact that they were allowing him to ask them questions shows that they respected his thoughts. Pero, um, ellos dejando que él haciera las preguntas enseña que lo respetaban y respetaban sus ideas. You know, they, they, you know some people say that there, there, are no, there are no dumb questions. A veces la gente dice que no hay una pregunta tonta. Right, that's not true. Eso no es verdad. <laughs> there are plenty of dumb questions. <laughs> hay muchas preguntas tontas. Right, they're usually asked from, by ignorant people. Y usualmente son preguntadas por gente ignorante. But it's better to ask than not to ask. Pero siempre es mejor preguntar que nunca preguntar. How are you going to learn if you don't ask? ¿Cómo van a aprender si nunca preguntan? But in, in the Jewish tradition, Pero en la tradición judía, you would only be given permission to ask questions if you had proven yourself already. Solo se le diera permiso de hacer preguntas si ya se han hecho, um, se han puesto a prueba de ser, um, No, I refuse to hold on. Sorry. Um, okay. The word's escaping me. No, 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 no. Worthy. Let's... I have no idea what it said. <laughs> I can't remember. Well, that does not help me. No. Nope. <laughs> um, Just paraphrase. Make it up. They won't know. Merecido. <laughs> <laughs> Sin haber primero haberlo merecido. Okay. I have been told that the questions he was asking were not questions to gain information for himself, but to draw the teachers into a deeper understanding of what they were teaching. Almost not like he was quizzing them, but kind of. <laughs> that is theoretically possible, but we have no idea. Okay. However, I'll let you go ahead. Translate that, and then I'll then I'll follow up in agreement with you. Um, ella dice que lo que ella sabe de cuando Jesús estaba en el templo haciendo preguntas no hacía preguntas porque él no sabía, pero hacía preguntas como para poner a prueba qué es lo que ellos uh, los maestros sabían y como y tener un pensamiento más profundo de qué es lo que están enseñando a la gente. Trivia. Uh, so, does anybody remember, this will be the last thing because it's getting late. Does anybody remember right after Jesus went home with Joseph and, Joseph and Mary and was obedient to them, what does the Gospel of Luke say that Jesus grew in? Jesus grew in what? He was obedient to them. Oh. oh, wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. Well, wait, if you're the son of God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, how can you grow in wisdom and knowledge? The Bible can't lie. Sorry, forget it. Don't try to translate. No, I'm uh, so, so, how could Jesus have grown in wisdom and knowledge? Well, as God, he can't. But as a human man, as a human 12 year old boy who was growing, he could. What that means is. Jesus' divine mind did not tell his human mind everything. So he would have had to ask questions and learn like any human to a certain degree. Now there were times when his divine intellect told his human intellect things that it could not have known otherwise. Like when it says Jesus could read people's hearts. Well, as a man, he can't read people's hearts, right? 
Humans don't have the ability to, to read what somebody's thinking and feeling, right? I mean, you might be able to guess it, but you can't know 100%. So, but as God, Jesus knew. So his divine mind knew what you were thinking. And therefore, his divine mind told his human intellect what it was. And then he could react to it. Now, this is interesting about Jesus because he had two intellects, two minds. One that knew everything and one that didn't know everything. Right? He had two wills, one that could do everything, because it was God, and one that couldn't do everything, because it was a man's will. So in this regard, what we see is Jesus would have asked questions to learn, deepen his knowledge, but he was probably the smartest 12-year-old that ever existed. So he would have also asked very impressive questions that would have amazed everybody else. Because Jesus, even as a 12-year-old boy, would have been so intelligent that he would have asked questions the teachers never even thought of. So they would have learned from his questions. Yes, that's absolutely true. But he would have also asked questions seeking deeper understandings because he was only 12 years old. So this is also the case, just real quick as we end up, you were here for doing fine. Um, so in some mystics, they say that Jesus and Mary could talk even when he was still in her womb. That's crazy. Now. Mary could talk to God, of course, anybody can, right? But that doesn't mean there was some, you know, like telepathic communication between his human brain and her human. His human brain didn't develop the first 10, 20, 30 days. I don't know, when, when is the child's, the, the baby's brain really developed to any significant degree in the womb? I think they're about 27. 27? Years. <laughs> Touche. Um, <laughs> Thank God I'm older than 27. But, um, yes, okay, so it takes a while. The, the point is, even when Jesus was first born, he couldn't talk. It doesn't mean his divine mind wasn't working properly. It's that his body had not yet sufficiently developed in a mature enough way. Now, he would have talked faster than the average child. He would have been more intelligent than the average child his, his age. Of course he would. But that doesn't mean he was some miracle baby that could, like, you know, change his own diaper at, at four months. You know, that's ridiculous. It just doesn't make any sense, right? He was a real human. When you have what we call a savant, which is a person that at an extremely young age, sometimes four or five years old, can already think and process and do things that a 10-year-old or a 20-year-old can't do, that's actually a genetic abnormality. That's not normal. There's something genetically off with them. It just leads them to a certain excellence in this area. Jesus didn't have any genetic problems. Therefore, he would have been an average person genetically. So, yeah. I was just wondering, would Jesus, like, well, the first question beforehand was, would Jesus have, like, a dual personality? Okay, good question. So he's only one person. He is one person. So, so right. So as a singular divine person, he has two natures. He can act in either nature in any way that he chooses. So when Jesus rose somebody from the dead, what is, was it his human nature or his divine nature doing it? Right, but his divine nature was working through his human nature. When Jesus ate food and slept, was that his divine nature or human nature? human nature. But he's still doing it, even though he's a divine person. Um, so he didn't have like multiple personality disorder or anything like that. Uh, the reason is his human nature was always obedient to his divine. So there was never a problem. There was never a conflict between the two. Anytime his divine intellect said, think this, his human intellect said, okay. <laughs> Anytime his divine will said, do this, his human will went, okay. They were always obedient, always flawlessly obedient. Um, uh, so I, I've often thought, we'll stand and I'll give you a blessing, but I've, I've often thought that if Jesus ever played soccer, he would be like the best soccer player ever, right? Like Pelo, Pele, Pele? Pele. Pele couldn't even stand up to him. I did that one. Like, so I like, he would, can you imagine, like if he put his mind to anything as a man, he could have been the best in the world at it. But obviously, sorry, soccer didn't exist back then. So. Okay. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father.
and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. So if I could get the ladies to help pick up some of the trash, the gentlemen to put the